hello everyone thank you all for being here i'm really overwhelmed right now um thanks for coming to my first ever live stream uh so many familiar faces um yeah freya's here too is everything sound and look okay oh my gosh hi everyone Freya, what's, what's wrong with you? Okay, yay, everything's working. That was my number one fear, was tech issues. And my number two fear was that no one would show up, so. <laughs> uh, we're all doing, already doing pretty well, except now I'm extra nervous, so um, bear with me. I'm so new at this. Uh, it's my first time live streaming anything. I've never even been on someone else's live stream before. Like, I've never been live on the internet, so. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, today we're celebrating, um, we're celebrating seven years on YouTube and we're also celebrating, we hit uh, 17,000 subscribers this week. Uh, so yeah, um, I know seven years isn't necessarily like a huge milestone, like it's not like five or 10, but you know, 2020 has been such a dumpster fire year for everyone, myself included. So. I thought it'd be it'd be fun to celebrate what I actually did accomplish this year instead of focusing on, you know, all the other stuff. <laughs> Seven years was approximately 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, and yet it also feels like yesterday somehow, in a way. It's hard to remember my life before YouTube sometimes. Uh, oh, it's just like hanging out at MAGFest Sports Bar. I know. I'm gonna miss MAGFest so much this year. This would have been my ninth year going. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for all the congratulations. Um, yeah, so many people. Oh my gosh, 42 people are here. <laughs> um, you know, I was just going to leave the music playing for a while, waiting for people to come in, but when everyone was here already, I had to take a minute to gather myself because I got really nervous all of a sudden. Uh, so I'm just going to breathe a little bit. Um, but yeah, so... Okay, so the plan for today is um, we're just gonna have a nice chill hangout. Uh, ask me anything you want. I have some Q&A uh, from Twitter that I already got to start us off. And we'll also, I guess, watch some old videos together um, to reminisce about, you know, the beginnings of the channel and also to show some of uh, our greatest collaborators that have really made this channel what it is today. Oh, hi, Carlos. Thanks for the congratulations. Oh, gosh, I recognize everyone in this chat almost. It's like crazy. Um, thank you all for being here. <laughs> it's so much support and I'm feeling the love. All right. Um, okay, let me find my prepared questions here. Frey, you want to say hi? Hey, baby. <laughs> She's probably going to be in my lap the whole time. Um... Yeah, Freya, if you don't know. Freya's stream. I know, I wish I could get her more on camera. Let me see if she'll cooperate. Oh. Hey, baby. You wanna say hi? <laughs> she really doesn't like to be picked up. Um, whenever I pick her up, she just goes like, like, she's like, fine, I won't fight you, but I'm not gonna help either. <laughs> so, um, but she might hang her out in the background. That's my hope anyway. Um, all right, questions. <laughs> um, we're gonna start with a question from Andy Roo. Um, when you started seven years ago, did you have any goals, aspirations for your channel? Have you met any of those goals? Have your goals changed over the years? Um, oh, my cat's name is Freya, uh, for someone who just asked. Um, but yeah, so when I started my channel, um, I had been wanting to start for uh, maybe two or three years, but I didn't have the guts to do it. And then finally, um, I had this idea to do a VGM cover album, but like a big one that I would need to like do a Kickstarter for and record in a studio because back then I couldn't record myself or do anything. So everyone is doing things with Kickstarters back then. Um, you know, but I was like, well, I can't launch a Kickstarter because no one knows who I am. No one's going to give me money. So I thought I'll start a channel. I'll gain a following. I'll get some experience. And then after a year, <laughs> unrealistic expectations, after a year, I would um, I would launch the Kickstarter and do this album. Uh, did I ever do that album? No. So clearly, uh, my goals have changed a lot over the years um, because, mostly because I, there are so many opportunities I've gotten from YouTube that I just couldn't have seen coming at all. Um, 
and they've been really great and it's just kind of completely changed the path of my career as well. Um, sorry, I'm not used to keeping up with chat, so I hope I don't miss anything here. Um, Okay, question from Stern Player Game. Okay, uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, my goals have changed for over the years, um, and mainly now, my goals for my channel have more to do with my creative goals. So it's not like about hitting 100,000 subscribers, although I would love that. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. But also, you know, it's like I really want to do this, really this kind of video, and I need, or, or this kind of opportunity, and I need, you know, to have a bigger audience for that. So that, that's mainly where I'm at right now. Um, but mostly I'm just having fun with it, and I love, I've loved the journey of YouTube so far. Uh, string Player Gamer, I always admire your violin tone control. How often do you practice, and what etudes do you recommend for vibrato? Um, I don't practice as consistently as I used to. When I was in school, I would practice, I mean, every day for like three or four hours. Um, because now it's like, if I'm playing, if I'm working, I'm not really practicing. Um, but I do try to do like at least, you know, a certain amount of basics every day as what I recommend, maybe like an hour of basics to upkeep if you're, um, if you're doing that. Uh, for vibrato, I don't have any specific like etudes. Um, I used to do this kind of like, D and then like as triplets, da and then da with a metronome. So basically just kind of uh, gradually speeding it up with metronome. And I used to do that to warm up every day um, back when I was in school. So um, it's pretty basic, but I think it, it gets the job done. <laughs> I need to get YouTube famous so people give me money to make my big album. Um, okay, so yeah, I did have unrealistic expectations of how long it would take me to grow an audience, but it was also like, I wanted to have a body of work out there. So if people were like, who is this person asking for money? At least I could send them to like the stuff I've done, you know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that would have been, that would have been nice. Uh, actually, this was the year I was going to make that album finally. And then COVID-19 happened and kind of derailed all of my plans for that. So uh, maybe next year I'll finally get to do the album. That was the reason I started my YouTube channel. <laughs> Do you have any inspirations when you're arranging things? Um, it depends. Uh, it's hard to answer. Like, I feel like every arrangement is different, and sometimes my videos are more inspired from the video part than the arrangement. Um, if I hear an arrangement kind of going in a certain way, like, it feels like it has a kind of Brahms vibe, then I might really lean into that. So if I hear something that it reminds me of, I might use that to kind of direct it in a way. Are you willing to share the idea for the album? <laughs> um, well, it's funny because if you, if you watch some of my vlogs over the years, I have talked about it. Like I talked about it since the beginning of this channel, which is why I don't talk about albums anymore until they're almost done because um, even this album that we're listening to now, the one that I released with Paula, was started years ago, and it took me till this, you know, till last year to finally finish it. So I'm really not good at finishing albums, um, but it was it's it was going to be for one of my favorite series of all time, which has not appeared very much at all on this channel because I've been saving it for this album. So that's kind of the only like shame there is that like, I love this music so much that I'm not putting it on YouTube because I'm trying to save it for this album <laughs> that I will hopefully eventually do. Oh, Freya just hopped off. Uh, before you became focused on music, did you work on non-music related jobs? No, actually, I started doing music work very young. I started playing weddings when I was like still in middle school and I did some uh, live orchestra gigs when I was still like heading into high school, so I never really had to work um, I never had to work non-music jobs before I did music after I graduated school on the other hand I did a lot of regular jobs. I worked at a movie theater. I did tech support at a call service tax support or tax preparation company um, After I got out of school, but I've, I've been focused on music for a really long time uh, as a career <laughs> Ro, you do know a lot of my album ideas. Uh, <laughs> we've talked about it a bit. Uh, let's see. 
Samantha, you mentioned that you got lots of opportunities from YouTube. You couldn't have anticipated what sort of opportunities were those. Oh yeah, I meant to like elaborate on that. I just got flustered, but um, mainly like remote recording, which is a big part of my career now. I do a lot of recording for games and TV and film and all kinds of projects. And like, I didn't even know that was something I could do, um, you know, as an option. But as I started doing YouTube, people would ask me, oh, can you record yourself for this or that? And I started to realize that, like, that could lead to that sort of thing. Um, yeah, uh, so it's led to a lot of work that I've had as a performer, as a, I mean, as like a recording performer, um, but also arranging work too, just from the connections I've made through YouTube and places like MAGFest and stuff. Because when I started my channel, I was still a serious, uh, I want an orchestra job musician. Like, this took me a whole different direction than where I was going before that. Who's your favorite video game composer? That's really hard to pick. Can I pick three? <laughs> um, probably Mitsuda, Uematsu, and Koji Kondo, because I can't really decide. How did you meet Paula Bressman and start working with her? Uh, we met through playing orchestra gigs together. Um, and it was funny because I'd wanted to work with a harpist for a long time, but as a violinist in orchestra, you don't often get to meet the harpists because um, like they don't often come to all the rehearsals or they might leave early um, or you know come in late and kind of keep to themselves. Um, so it was cool when I finally met Paula on like a dinner break uh, playing for Orchestra Kentucky, I think. Um, and she was super sweet and open to collaborating on creative projects. She was starting her own YouTube channel with her harp duo, so she was like very into doing things other than orchestra. Um, so I was really glad for that, and um, you know that led to immediately us working on Fairy Fountain together, and then that led to a lot of other things. She's been on my channel so much, um, and then we did that album together. So yeah, she's definitely one of the biggest collaborators I've had on my channel since the very beginning. Oh my gosh, chat is going so fast. <laughs> um, how did you start your career? Um, my cur <laughs> I don't know how to answer that exactly. Um, I've been playing violin since I was six. I came from a musical family. I had a lot of advantages there um, and opportunities. Um, <laughs> uh, I started playing weddings when I was, well, my mom worked in a church, so I started playing weddings kind of casually. Uh, um, when I was young and we also had um, well my family owned an opera company in Miami so I got started playing in the pit orchestra there and that was like a real union orchestra gig like it was really intense um, and crazy that I was able to do that um, and you know from there I just you know as a freelance musician you just kind of keep kind of going through that um, I've never had like a full-time job like with an orchestra or anything it's always been freelance and then yeah it's kind of hard to, to put like a linear trajectory because I've also kind of changed a lot too. I wanted to have a full-time orchestra job, um, but then I didn't. And then I thought I would never like session work and then I really did. And then, you know, I started doing YouTube stuff. So it just kind of evolved a lot over time. You did tech support for a tax prep company. Yeah, it was a crazy job. It was like one of those, I had no qualifications. Um, well, no one would hire me because I had a music degree and no job experience. So it was through like a, what do you call this? Um, like a temp agency. <laughs> you didn't need any experience. I didn't know anything about taxes, but it was like they made tax preparation software for tax preparers. And then um, we did the tech support for them. So I ended up learning a lot about taxes so I could do my own taxes. So it ended up actually being, it was a terrible job, very stressful and horrible, but it was very useful. <laughs> so I'm kind of grateful for that. <laughs> you and George Spriggs could get together and start a YouTube tax prep thing. I'm definitely not as knowledgeable as he is, but I, I, I like nerding out at the stuff he talks about, for sure. Uh, beautiful cat sighted. Oh, was she in the back? Oh, actually, can you... <laughs> She's trying to break into uh, the closet. You want to come in my lap again? The closet is where I keep all of my all of my gear and stuff, and she's always trying to break in there because I don't let her go in there. Come on. Okay, let me try to get back into chat. Do you get addicted? Oh, hi, Randy. Do you get addicted to buying new camera and recording gear? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I've bought way too much over the years. Uh, serious orchestra musician. Yeah, 
I know. It took me a long time to kind of get over the wanting to be a serious orchestra musician or like a legitimate musician. Um, because also for many years, the people I worked with wouldn't really take what, what I was doing on YouTube very seriously, which I think a lot of us can relate to that probably, um, especially if you don't, if you work like a regular job and you don't want to tell them what you do on the side. <laughs> um, you know, and it's only in, been in uh, recently since, actually since COVID happened, I've, people have a lot more respect now for what I do because, um, because I can work from home and I can do all this stuff. Um, you know, since we can't perform anymore, most of my career used to be as a performing musician. And if it was still the case, I would have no work right now. So I'm very grateful. I'm so grateful to all of you that, you know, have helped me make my YouTube what it is because yeah, I wouldn't have anything right now without it, probably. Uh, how many instruments do you play? I, I have a whole video called All My Instruments where I showed everything that I own, but mostly I'm a collector. Uh, I don't play most of them very well at all, just like maybe well enough to do a YouTube video. Uh, but violin mainly, some self-taught piano, some self-taught viola, and really that's all I would say that I would count. Everything else I just kind of mess around with for fun. I just got a flute recently, so I've been trying to learn that more for real. So we'll see if I actually ever get good enough to do that for a video. <laughs> Moving the harp around is such an ordeal, so I'm glad you got to meet her. Yeah, I am. I'm very glad. Um, and, and funny, uh, moving the harp around. That's also why a lot of our videos together, like um, some of the ones we did for our album, she's just recording in like my living room and I'm doing stuff outdoors because the thought of trying to get the harp outside was just too much for us to handle logistically. We couldn't really work it to do that. Or even, we can't even record in my office because it's on the second floor. So like, this is where I have all my equipment and stuff set up. So yeah, it's been a little difficult for that reason. But I love working with her. Um, I'm so grateful to have gotten to do that so much over the years. Um, Harpists are so cool. They have more strings than me. Yeah, me too. Oh, is everyone talking about taxes now? <laughs> ah, sorry guys. There's like cat hair now everywhere. <laughs> Freya's very floofy. <laughs> mom forced me to take violin lessons. Did someone else say something like that? Or are you just guessing? Or, or was that your experience? <laughs> so my mom is a musician. Um, she's a pianist. It was my idea to play violin. She thought it was just a phase. I was four when I asked for violin. She thought it was just a phase. So she's like, maybe when you're six. And then I think I like never mentioned it ever again until my sixth birthday where I was like, okay, where's my violin? <laughs> And so she's like, uh-oh, I guess we gotta, I guess we gotta do this. <laughs> okay, I just got really lost in the chat. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry if I miss your question. I didn't expect it to be this lively at all. <laughs> I was worried, I, I was thinking there was gonna be more like crickets in here. I remember, oh, Mrs. McHugh. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, long time no see, yeah. Yeah, I used to play weddings at OLL. That was where I went to middle school. It was also my church. I went to a Catholic school for most of my life. Uh, take it from an IT person. Experience is optional. <laughs> yeah, I, well, it's funny because at the time I was really good at, I, I became really good at um, tech support for PCs, but then I ended up switching to Mac right after. And now I can barely work one at all. And I don't know anything about Macs either. So I'm useless when it comes to that. What do you think about Suzuki method for violin beginners? I did Suzuki method. Um, I did it like hardcore Suzuki from age six all the way through high school with like a, you know, accredited teacher. We did like the weekly group classes, all of that. I highly support Suzuki. Um, I know not everyone is a fan. There's a lot of criticism that you won't learn to sight read well if you do Suzuki, which I consider sight reading to be my greatest skill as a musician. Uh, my job is as a session musician, which is literally I show up and sight read. That's my job. So I, I don't really buy that as an excuse. If you have a good teacher, then they're gonna make sure your sight reading skills develop just like everything else. Um, so yeah, I had a good experience with Suzuki and I have a lot of friends who did as well. Uh, people that I work with and all of that. Oh, okay. A, dedica a dedicated gear closet would be so nice. I know. Um, in my last place, I had one of those 
like this is a walk-in closet, but I had one of those like the ones that is it's not walk-in, just like the, the sliding doors. And this was so much nicer. I'm really lucky that I have such an, a large office um, in this place, but we're probably gonna be moving soon-ish. So who knows what I'm gonna have next, but I'm enjoying it for now. She wants to be the next VGM sensation. You know, I wish I could put Freya in my videos more, but she actually hates the sound of the violin so much. Like, if I just move towards the case to open it, she starts running away. It's it's a little insulting, honestly. <laughs> what are you working on next? So happy I came across your work. You are wonderful. Thank you. Uh, what am I working on next? Um, for my next video, I'm doing a collab with Israfel Cello and Purple Shala of a song from Xenoblade, which is my latest favorite game of all time. I uh, recently discovered it and the music is just to die for, so I'm doing a lot of Xenoblade in the future. I'm also probably trying to get back to doing some more stuff from Breath of the Wild because uh, Zelda is like the biggest franchise on my channel and somehow I've kind of not done much from Zelda lately and I am sad about that. So I need to get back to doing, back to basics, back to Zelda. Um, I love your Fire Emblem music. Thank you. I love Fire Emblem so much. Uh, three Houses. I've never played a game as much as I played that one. It was like 315 hours when I finally finished. <laughs> How would you rate your sight reading 1 to 10? Um, I mean, it's not like I'm the best sight reader in the world. I'm sure there are people better than me, but I definitely, it's my best skill. Um, and it's what I do for a living. So probably I would rate it pretty high. <laughs> How about a dedicated gear room? Oh, that would be nice. I would love to have like a basement or, you know, a, yeah, like in a whole other room. That would be really nice because it's kind of hard when I moved into this space. I do all of my recording like for projects and for clients and I do all of my filming and I do all of my writing and practicing all in the same room and that was kind of tough to figure out how I was going to lay it out. Um, so if I had another room just to kind of have more space that would be amazing. Hashtag candle squad. Yeah so if you haven't noticed I love candles. <laughs> I love using candles in videos. And I only burnt a bookshelf once, so. <laughs> when I was in school, I never told anyone about my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, if I had still been in school at, like, in my music conservatory, I, I probably wouldn't have either. And honestly, that's probably why I waited so long to start was because I thought people would judge me or think I wasn't as serious about practicing and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, in classical world, there is a lot of, there's a lot of, exp there's, you know, even when I was, when I was an undergrad, I considered doing a composition double major because I actually came into college with like a whole year of credits done, like from AP classes and stuff. So I had lots of room in my schedule and I thought, why don't I add a composition double major? Because I was interested in that. And my teacher told me, he's like, no one will take you seriously, you know, as a performer, if you also are studying composition. And I was like, you know, he was kind of right. Like I, at that point in time, I needed to buckle down on practicing, but that stuck in my head for a really long time. And that's also why I never told people that I enjoyed arranging because um, I thought people would judge me for that. Um, please remind me to drink water while I'm here. I'm already starting to feel my throat going, <laughs> getting uh, hoarse here. I was, um, that was another thing I was worried about if I was gonna lose my voice. Um, while doing this. <laughs> I'm not used to talking so much. Uh, and traditional path. Uh, do you have any strategy for what covers you do or you do just, or you just do what you want? Um, I mostly just do what I want, but I keep things in mind. Like people really like when I do Zelda. Um, if there's a big game that's really popular that I also love because I don't like just jumping on the hype train. It feels a little disconnected to me. Um, you know, I might do that. If a new game is coming out that I want to celebrate the, the release, I might do that. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's mostly what I want to do. I don't do requests. Um, oh, I just totally lost where I was in the chat. I think I'm like super behind now. Oh my gosh. I'm really sorry if I just like miss a whole... Okay. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Let, 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 um, okay. Uh, do you mix and master songs by yourself or have an extra person for, for that? 
I've never had an extra person for anything, um, and it's not necessarily because I don't want one, but uh, I don't have the budget for that, and I've just learned how to do it on my own. Also, uh, there aren't that many people who do what I do exactly, um, like there are a lot of violinists, but the style that I do where it's almost kind of like classical music a lot of the times, um, in the way that it's mixed, um, like I just trust myself to do it more because I have more experience with it. Uh, your piano is self-taught. Oh, sort of. Um, I took a year of lessons when I was like 10. My mom was a piano teacher, so I absorbed a lot from her just from... But she couldn't teach me because I wouldn't listen to her. Like, so no formal training there. Uh, and then when I was in college, I... I... You know, we had to take four, four semesters of piano in college, so I took, like... I placed out of three of them from the skills I had already. And then I took one, and then I took lessons because it was kind of like free free lessons, so why not? So I think I took like two semesters of college piano lessons, and that was really intense. Um, so that helped a lot, but I just couldn't keep up practicing piano on top of violin at the rate that I needed to do while I was in school. So um, most of that atrophied until I started YouTube, and then I was like, I really should learn how to play piano so that I can do more things by myself. Okay, uh, trying to see if I can catch up a little bit now. I was definitely forced into music and did not want to do it when I was a kid. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry about that. I was, um, well, yeah, I wasn't forced, but it was just like the thing to do, kind of. <laughs> it just felt, uh, that's what I had around me. Suzuki Twinsies. Oh, yay! <laughs> Harp sight reading is especially hard. Yeah, I believe it. Um, I was always really impressed with how well Paula could sight read the stuff I threw at her, though. <laughs> like, considering how difficult most of it was, because, you know, a lot of this video game music was not written with a harpist in mind um, at all. So she was always really great about trying to make it work. Do you still enjoy classical music? Who is your favorite composer and maybe favorite soloist? I love classical music. I, I love it so much. Like, I really, I hardly ever play classical music anymore in my career, and I miss it a lot. Um, my favorite composer is Prokofiev, always, no doubt. And my favorite soloist, are we talking violin soloist? Um, Gil Shaham, probably. I don't know. I, there are a lot. There are a lot of people that I really admire. Um, but he was my favorite growing up. He was a big influence on me as a child, so I would probably say him too. Oh. Is Fire Emblem music playing now? I can't actually hear what we're listening to, but... <laughs> the playlist might run out at some point. Um, what was up with that one video that had all the glamour shots of pizza? Randy, well, if you... I don't think you've played Final Fantasy VII Remake yet, right? But um, they developed Jesse's character a lot in the game. And there was... Uh, pizza is a central theme. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but but that's why. Because the, the big themes for for her like character were like pizza and cats. So, you know, any excuse to put my cats in a video, honestly. <laughs> In piano sight reading class, my professor said you test my patience, but in a kind of impressed way. I had the same experience in some classes I took. I was that student that was kind of anno annoying to teach. <laughs> uh, do you guys write out parts or just perform them as you go? Is that for me? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Everyone's talking in the chat now, too, which is cool. Um, generally, for most of the people that I kind of recruit into playing with me, I do write out parts for them. There are some cases when, like, make your own part is appropriate, but um, it kind of depends. There's some people I work with where I just kind of, we just kind of do our own thing, but that only can happen when you're used to working with someone in a certain way and you can just trust that they'll do that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh gosh, I just jumped again. <laughs> Hi, Danny. 
uh, hey, Pat, you burned a bookshelf. Yeah. Um, it was when I was doing those uh, Dragon Age Inquisition videos. It was like the first time I made a set myself. And, um, you know, I had some candles on. Actually, it's that shelf back there. That's the one that I burned. But I didn't know that um, you can burn wood even if the flame is not touching the wood. Like, it was on the middle shelf. And just the heat of the candle... Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Um... Final Fantasy XIII 2 Knowles theme is my favorite out of your early videos. Which do you like the most? So I actually planned um, to show a lot of old videos on this stream because I didn't think people were going to be super ch uh, chatty with the questions and um, I thought it might be more interesting than just me talking. Um, oh gosh, I feel like I have to get through all these things before we move on though. Um, that was definitely one of my favorite earlier ones as well because that was, that was probably the best video I did in year one of my channel. That one and maybe also Dire Dire Docs, which we recently remade. Did you play at Until Dawn Orchestra? Um, I played in the orchestra for the soundtrack, yes. I did, that was a very long time ago. <laughs> when are we getting Patty branded candles? If, if people want them, I will look into it. I have no merch, so send me ideas for that. Uh, I would gladly take a break to watch a video, but I'm like afraid I'm missing all the questions that are currently on here. <laughs> Let me just try to skim through really quick. Did you ever play as a soloist uh, a concerto? Yes. Um, In a real sense, maybe only once, I played um, Cezanne's Introduction Rana Capriccioso with uh, the youth orchestra that I used to go to when I was young. But I, like when I was in college, I was invited back to perform it with them. And that was amazing. <sighs> Heifetz or Perlman? Uh, Perlman. I'm not really a Heifetz fan. I don't know. The style, that old school style is not really for me. I like the more modern, um, especially like German, uh, Franco-Belgian style of violin playing. I like Ravel. I love Ravel. I love all those French composers, uh, especially Ravel. Favorite modern living composer? Oh, hi, Ryan. Um, oh, geez. Um, oh, lots of people are joining my Discord. I forgot to plug that, but we have a Discord now. Uh, the link should be in our uh, description of the video here, so if you want to join us on there. Uh, it recently became a public Discord, so anyone can join. And uh, yeah, we have, we have good times. Okay, favorite modern living composer? Mm, that's really hard to say. Like, are we including video game composers? Because that makes it even harder. <laughs> um, for like classical, maybe John Adams. But... Um, there's too many. I love Jessica Curry. Um, also, I'm, I don't know, I'm friends with a lot of video game composers now, so I feel like it would be weird to say one of them because, I don't know. <laughs> I was not prepared for this question. Uh, Ravel String Quartet in F. Yes, I love that. I played that once. Actually, when I was at a music festival in France, it was amazing. Super salad. Soup, always. I don't dislike salad, but it takes a lot for me to like a salad. But soups I usually, I usually like. Okay. Oh, I finally caught up with the chat, I think. <laughs> Bookshelf burner. Uh, I feel like I should bring up Mario RPG somehow. Okay, actually, yes. Thank you for bringing it up. We're gonna use that to segue in a second. Uh, do you listen to your old recordings videos regularly? I used to every year I would watch all of my videos from the channel just for like some reflection But I haven't done that in a while uh, So if we watch some old videos now, it's gonna be nice to see my reactions, maybe <laughs> um, Okay, I'm now caught up, but I have some Twitter questions that I want to answer because now I feel bad People sent questions and I want to make sure to answer them. Okay. Piano Game Night asks, if you had a chance, what would you have done differently or changed at all when you first started your YouTube journey? Um, 
Aside from the obvious, I wish I knew more about recording and stuff when I started, but mostly I wish I'd started sooner, um, because I would be in a different place now, and you know, it's okay that I didn't know anything when I started, because it was just good that I started, otherwise I would have waited longer and I would have regretted that even more. So, speaking of the beginnings of my channel and Mario RPG, would you all like to watch... <clears throat> would you all like to watch my very first YouTube video? Has anyone been around since the first one? Probably not. Only probably my friends and family were around back then. <laughs> my stream handling looks like I've streamed for seven years and I'm crushing it. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Ro. And thank you for um, hooking me up with this webcam and helping me get my streaming setup figured out because I was so nervous about it. Be sure to hydrate while you watch. Yes, that is the plan. Um, okay, so let me switch over. Let me make sure I've got this ready because this is the most nerve wracking part for me. Switching, switching scenes. All right, um, here we go. Oh, oops. I forgot to... <laughs> Wait, no, I think I can still do it from here. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um... Oh no, what is happening? Why isn't this working? <laughs> oh no. I am so embarrassed right now. Why, why isn't this working? <laughs> well, everything was going so well. Um, of course we had to have something go wrong. I set this up and I didn't even move the window like at all because, because yeah. So let me, um, let me pull up another. <laughs> another YouTube window and try to set it up again. Um, um, yeah, bear with me. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous now. At least there's still music playing. I was so prepared, let me tell you. Okay. All right, we're, um, we're, we're ready. What did I miss now while <laughs> that was happening? Um, oh yeah, remind, thanks for reminding me that there's still music playing so I can remember to like turn it off before we do this. Thanks. Yeah, that's because um, it's set to the audio. It's set so that we can watch the video. So I'm gonna turn off the music we were listening to, so that that won't be an issue anymore. Um. <sighs> okay, I think we're back. All right. I think we are ready. So, um, I guess a little backstory on this. Um, 
I asked a bunch of my friends that I worked with, you know, in orchestra gigs and stuff, if they wanted to come over and sight read a bunch of video game music. And I had a stack this thick of string quartet music that I'd arranged over the years. And we just like recorded seven videos in one day. And I guess they had fun because they wanted to come back and like, you know, do it again the next week. So that's how I started my channel. We just like recorded a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, thick stack of DGEM, exactly. More stuff than we could have even gotten through in those two days. Um, because I've been waiting years for this chance to finally do something like this. So, um, so yeah. But I had never, is that the same cello player from Cass's theme? No, actually, um, this, is, this is Nick Gold. Oh, let me introduce everyone. Amy Hellman on violin, Michael Giblin on viola, and Nick Gold on cello. This is the main quartet I had for most of my channel. Uh, but more recently, you're seeing is Rafael cello on most of my stuff lately, Andrew. Um, I know it's kind of hard to tell because it's like, how many pixels are in this video? It's, <laughs> it's so old. Um, stream glitches are happening. Is it, wait, are, am I still glitching? Is anything wrong? Or, or just talking about from before? <laughs> okay. Everything's okay? All right. Um, okay, good. So yeah, so we're just here in my living room and um, the boys are not wearing shoes for some reason, which I didn't realize until afterwards. And let me tell you the amount of comments I've gotten on them being barefoot over the years has been a lot. Uh, so um, yeah, Super Mario RPG is one of my favorite games of all time. So I thought it was only fitting that the very first video was this one, Forest Maze. So here we go. So that was the first video. <laughs> um, strong way to start a YouTube channel. Thank you. I appreciate all the nice comments. Um, but like looking back, it's funny because I see so much wrong with it. You know, like um, somehow it was exported at 720p. It was also recorded in stereo, but exported in mono. Like, <laughs> it could have been so much better. Um, I think this was also the first time we ever played together as a quartet, because all of us played in orchestras, and it's different to play in an ensemble. So, um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of people still watch all these early quartet videos, and I mean, I like the arrangements. I would love to redo a lot of them in better quality, for sure. Maybe someday. Not this one though, because it's not licensable, but <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, while I've got this set up and before I like mess it up, do we want to watch some more 
other videos. Should we like, let me check my other questions to make sure what else I had here. <laughs> Limited release until, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so the quality of everyone's performance is good. You know, the recording quality is not the greatest and yeah, the video is the worst. I mean, like, gosh, it's so yellow and pixely. I learned a lot over the years, um, but okay. Um, I'm gonna pick a question from here just so I don't forget all these that were uh, sent in ahead of time. Rahul Vanamali asks, what's been your favorite moment of your YouTube journey so far? Not necessarily in terms of how your audience reacted to a video, but what you hold closest to your heart. So I have a lot of videos that I love, so it'd be hard to pick that, but I think I would definitely say collaboration has been the most important and meaningful part of this journey for me. Like, um, just getting to know people in the VGM community or, you know, in my, you know, like Paula is not in the VGM community, but like people in, in my life that love doing this kind of music and, you know, working with me on it has made all the difference to me and is what I enjoy the most about what I do on YouTube now. Um, cause I didn't have any friends who were both into gaming and music like I was growing up. Um, so it's been really special for that. Okay. Um, shall we watch another video? Speaking of collaboration, uh, video requests. I, I would like to do some older videos first before, um, before that, just because we're like looking back a little bit. Um, but then after we could do requests <laughs> if you want. Uh, Nimbus Land, yeah, I've seen a few people mention that one. We'll get to that one, I promise. Um, okay, so speaking of collaboration, um, I do wanna show the very first collab I did with someone, with like another YouTuber. Um, let's see if I like, okay. Oh, ah. There we go. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Why do I keep messing this up? <laughs> Kristen Nagus. Actually, she did not, she was not the first person that I did a VGM collab with. Although technically yes, because we did an EP together. Um, but on my channel, the first person that appeared um, was Adriana Figueroa. Who we met at, uh, who I met at Magfest, and after Magfest, realized, hey, we both live in the same city, so we got together for coffee. You know, talked about collabing, and I pitched this idea to her because I love this song so much, and um, I probably didn't even, I probably had already even arranged it, you know, on the hopes that I could get it done someday. Um, but this was definitely the biggest collab or, or this is like the biggest video of my year one of my channel it's still like in my top five most viewed ever videos um so it was a big deal for me at the time she had like sixty thousand subscribers and i had less than a thousand so i don't know what she was even doing working with me <laughs> would i collab with her again i would love to but i mean she's doing such incredible stuff these days you know um I, I, of course I would love to work with her again I, but I feel really lucky that she was able or willing to do this one with me um, they know each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, MAGFest, eight years. You meet a lot of other, you know, VGM people there. Uh, so that's that's been really awesome for me. Uh, so... <laughs> Padding Buddhism. Oh, yes. I know. Um, if you click musically, the numbers don't matter. It's true. Um, and I think it was it was cool that like we both lived in the same city, so we thought we would do it together, and that was nice. Um, and I, I don't think she'd even done a lot of videos on camera either, so it was kind of a new thing for her. <laughs> okay, so so anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I think I already introduced the video enough, so um, we'll we'll watch it. Uh, it's from Final Fantasy XIII. Noel's theme, The Last Journey, featuring uh, Adriana Figueroa on vocals and our string quartet. And this is also, I think, the first video that I played piano for. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that too.
All right. Yeah, isn't that just like the best song ever? It's It's gotta be one of my favorite songs from a game. Just at all. <laughs> um, and the original song was for piano, strings, and voice. So like, it was just such a good match, you know? Um, so I knew I wanted to do this one with her. <laughs> Pick her D3, yeah. Someone commented on the shoes. Uh, yeah, so after I got all those comments about the lack of shoes, I made sure everyone wore shoes <laughs> the next time. This was the second the second time that we that we met <laughs> that we met up. Um, I don't know if there was another question I thought there was that I missed. Um. <laughs> I like the switch from Zoom H2 to XY mics. Uh, yes, but funny story. I did not know how to use an interface at the time and somehow ended up still recording in mono. So, <laughs> professional YouTuber. <laughs> what piece took you out of your comfort zone the most musically? Out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. It 
okay, probably The Last of Us. Well, okay, maybe not The Last of Us. That one, that mix was out of my comfort zone, that arrangement. Um, but maybe also, maybe the one I did with Ro, because that was very, that was the farthest out I've ever gone in terms of style on my channel, was our Octo, Octo Battle collabs. <laughs> Mono Squad, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I do want to show another, someone brought up Kristen earlier, so of course I want to show a video with Kristen. She's been on my channel for like dozens of videos I don't even know. Um, do you mix Master Your Own Music? Yes, I do, currently. Eventually it would be nice to hire someone to do that, but... Um, yeah, Kristen and I actually met at Distant Worlds concert that we were both playing in Miami, and then we realized, hey, we're both going to MAGFest, and, you know, we've become really good friends over the years. Um, you know, we've worked on a lot of projects together, um, both for YouTube and also for albums and also professionally in video game soundtracks. Um, but yeah, she plays, like, if you don't know who she is, um, she plays like a million wind instruments and other instruments. So the combination of like us together was always really great because we could do so much between all the instruments we could play. Um, so yeah, MAGFest is definitely the place to meet up with other VGMers. Why is everyone uncomfortable? And <laughs> Oh, Ro. <laughs> um, so... Okay, so this next one is probably another one of my most favorite... Wait, let me see when it came out. It was... Okay, so this was in year two of the channel, but still in 2014. One of my favorite collab videos and one of the biggest ones I did for a long time um, in terms of like number of people and just the scope. And it features Kristen on flute and oboe and also Paula. This is the first thing Paula and I worked on together, actually, um, because when I met her, I thought, hey, would you be willing to play this huge harp feature piece called Fairy Fountain? <laughs> um, yeah, oh, I hope you get to go, Samantha. I hope we all get to go again. <laughs> um, yeah, but don't don't go if it's not safe. I mean, if they if they somehow are still gonna have it, Magfest anyway. Um, so yeah, all right. So here is Fairy Fountain. If I can pull it up.
Well, that one still gets me. Um, this would definitely be on the top of my list of ones I would like to redo one day um, with better quality. Everyone's performances are just so good, and I was so proud of this arrangement <laughs> at the time. Um, and just this theme is so iconic, you know, and it meant so much to me growing up and to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> that's the way they place their feet. Wait, were we sitting badly? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> another World of Beasts. Yeah, that was another one with Kristen and Paula. Yeah. All right, Samantha, have a good gig. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Oh. All right, so what should we do next? Do you guys want to keep watching videos? <laughs> um, or, an or do more questions? Oh, actually, I did have one. I did have, okay. I mean, I, I marked a bunch that were like, best production or like the first outdoor video and other ones that were kind of like milestones for the for the channel um but also um have any of you all been around since the first time we did dire dire docs back in year one because we remade it recently um that was i was going to do that for this anniversary before i had the live live stream idea but we um that's the first time i've ever remade anything on my channel um that i'd done before so I mean, we could watch those back to back so you could see the difference if you want. Um, somehow the original Dire Dire is like one of my most viewed ever videos, like even still now. Um, but I mean, it was recorded so terribly, I always wanted another chance at it. So sure, let's go, let's watch it. Um, <laughs> dual mix, <laughs> yeah. Uh, before and after, like re uh, makeover. Thanks for coming, Piano Game Night. I appreciate it. If I think about using your music in a video, how, how do you want to use it? Like in background music or for a cover? Um, generally, like I don't, I don't have the copyright to any of my stuff because it's all like video game music and stuff. So I don't, I mean, if that's the reason you want to use it, then it's not really going to be super helpful as far as avoiding copyright claims. But most of my stuff doesn't get claimed, though, somehow. Okay, where is Dire Dire Docs? Oh, it's all the way back here. Uh, oh, wait. No, it's, it's not. I thought I was prepared for this. <laughs> okay. In the background, I don't mind, but um, legally, it's, I mean, it, you could still get copyright claimed, is what I'm saying, <laughs> even if you use my music. Like, I don't mind, but yeah, just a disclaimer. Okay, for some reason, I did not put Dire Dire Docs on this list, which was dumb. I only put the new one. All right, we're ready. Do I have any original compositions? Yes and no. There was a time when I thought I would be a composer, so I even had like a full composition recital in school and stuff. So I have stuff that I did then, but it's like classical music, like sonatas and stuff. Um, I haven't... I don't know, I've toyed around with the idea of composing again, but then I just get sidetracked by doing all this other stuff that I that I like doing. So, all right. So, shall we watch super lo-fi 2014 version of Dire Dire Docs, um, which actually inspired our entire album with Paula. Um, we did this video and um, 
Lo Fire Dire Dire Dogs to Sleep Study too. So actually the idea for our entire album that we released in December was because Paula, after we were recording this, um, made a comment. Paula's not a gamer, by the way. Um, she made a comment that this music sounded like spa music. And I was and she played it for her spa gig. She would have this gig playing at, you know, background music at a spa. And she played it. And she's like, yeah, and they loved it. No one knew what it was, but it was great. I'm like, yeah, it does kind of sound like spa music. I'm like, wouldn't it be fun to do a whole album of like relaxation, spa meditation y type music, but it all happened to be VGM? And so that was actually how it started the whole entire idea for our album. Um, so yeah, hang on one second. Super Spario 64. Yeah, I mean, the, the album didn't come out totally like, I mean, the concept changed a little bit, but initially that was our idea and that was kind of what led to that. We picked like Dire Dire Docs, we picked, you know, the Final Fantasy Prelude, all these ones that were like really soft and relaxing and yeah. Um, so I think it, it ended up being a cool concept in the end, but it's just funny how it came about. Um, all right, so here we go. The original, original Dire Dire Docs. <laughs> All right, so that was the very first one. Um, everything shot on an iPhone 4. Um, seems like we did this a lot slower than the version we ended up recording. When was my first time playing violin? Uh, I was six when I started. Um, yeah. So let me jump to... Oh, let me just back out of here just in case. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, uh. And the, oh. Oh my gosh, I'm so unprepared. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, I really tried. I really tried, you guys. The new one has ducks. It has 
it has lots of animals because that was a thing I discovered I liked doing was including animals in my in my videos. I thought playing harp was all muscle memory. I'm sure it is to some extent. I mean, I'm sure you still need that. I'm so unprepared, everyone, 2020. I know, well, ugh. all my plans for this year went out the window. So I've just been, yeah, everyone has, so. <laughs> all right, so this is the new one. Um, a few difference changes we made. Uh, well, actually, if you notice the opening screen and the other one was like a still shot of underwater with sun rays coming through. So that's why I chose this one to be like the first shot to kind of mimic that because it looked a little similar. Um, also, the new version is like twice as long because we did like a twice through. I always thought the old one was a little too, too short. Uh, so I did a few different things second time through. Um, and yeah, other than that, it was recorded with more than one microphone and not an iPhone, so hopefully <laughs> you all like this one a lot, a lot better. All right.
All right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like that one better? I liked it a lot better. Um, yeah, some... I want to address some of these comments. Uh, yeah, my hair grew out a lot. It used to be super short. Um, actually, my hair is a lot longer now than it was when we filmed that video in October. And Robbie's comment about October. So, um, so I filmed a lot of outdoor videos last fall. The thing is, where I live, there's only like two weeks where the weather is not too hot or too cold, and it's like in October. So I filmed like three outdoor videos in a row, including this one. Um, and it actually was quite hot that day. That's the thing. It's like where I live, it's hot forever before it gets cold. I'm a little jealous of all you Canadians where it's like cool already, but maybe not. I don't know. In the sense that it's really hot here still. But um, has anyone ever seen you while playing outside? Yeah. So uh, one of the big reasons I didn't start doing outdoor videos until more recently is because I was kind of afraid of that. Um, I did a lot of videos in my backyard. Um, and I think this was one of the first videos I filmed at like somewhere else. Um, and then so I needed someone to help with the camera and all of that. And there were people around, but like they didn't bother us. It was more like we had to find a place where people weren't going to be in the background. And the worst that has ever been was when we did Costa del Sol at the beach. Because people just floating in behind you in like the ocean when you're trying to record something. It was, it was a, it was a time. Um... It's nice you gave the harp the melody, maybe you did in the old one, I can't remember. Actually, yeah, so the arrangement was, we, we looped twice through, so it was a bit different in that sense. But mostly I gave the harp, well, the harp had the melody in the beginning. It just was harp solo instead of with string under, underneath. But mostly the harp part was the same. Uh, harp, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> it doubled the melody a lot, and we tried a version where the harp didn't double the melody. But because of the way we record, where Apollo records first and then I record later, if she was just like, da-da-da, da-da-da, like it would have been harder for timing to make sure that the melody would have enough time to fit in, you know? And I kind of like the sound of harp doubling strings. It gives it a little more of a percussive quality. Like it just brings it out a little bit more sparkle, I think. Um, not everyone likes that, but I do. Celebrating seven years of hair growing on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's definitely too long now, but I haven't gotten a haircut since December, so, oh well. <laughs> At least you still get snow. We didn't get snow two years ago. We got snow once this year, last year, this year. It, it was February, right? Um, <laughs> we got one snowfall in February, and that's when I went out and shot all those snow videos that I used in Buried in Snow which I originally wanted to film in the snow, but after shooting, I was like, there's no way I could possibly play violin out in the snow, I will die. So I didn't do that. Oh, and someone, I think, I lost the I lost the comment, but I think it was like, do you use another violin when you play outdoors? Yes, I do. I use a stunt double. My good violin will never see the outdoors. Um, I don't play outdoor wedding gigs or anything like that. I, I use the other, the other violin for that because it's never good conditions <laughs> for the violin. I live in Florida where we have a couple weeks of cold weather at U2. I grew up in Florida, um, but I live in Tennessee now. We have two weeks of like nice weather is what I meant, where it's not too hot and not too cold because we go from summer to like winter really fast. Um, and I get very hot when I film, so like I don't want to be... I filmed a video in July once and it was just terrible. I was just a sweaty mess. And normally I'm like... I can deal with it. Like, it's not about my comfort. It's about how I look on camera because my face turns bright red and my eyeliner just like melted all over my face. It was, yeah, this is why I don't film in the summer. <laughs> I filmed beside the net, the Washington Monument once. Someone asked a selfie and asked if I was famous. I said if I was, they wouldn't ask. So actually when I filmed at the beach, someone came up to me, like this little old lady came up and she lived in one of like the condos that was on the beach. And so she heard me playing and she came down and I think she thought I was famous too. Cause she asked for her selfie with me and she was like so excited to meet me. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just a regular person. I'm not, I'm not anyone special here. 
How many people help you recording your outdoor videos? Uh, uh, if I'm lucky, one person will come help me. Uh, I filmed Korok Forest, Color of the Summer Sky, and The Last of Us by myself because I had no choice. But um, those were all filmed in my backyard. If I go somewhere else, I need to have someone help because otherwise I'm kind of afraid of for my safety, but also there's no way to like frame the camera while I'm also doing it outdoors, you know, with all of that, it's, it's stressful. So usually it's either my husband, um, my friend Israel Cello has helped a few times. And when I was in Miami, my mom helped. So that's it. Just like friends who are willing to help, not like an actual camera crew or anything I wish. <laughs> Did you go to, did you go at Brazil someday? Have I been to Brazil? I actually have. Um, I went in 2005 for three weeks. Uh, I would love to go again if I could travel ever again. <laughs> um, the fake cabin was amazing. Yeah, that is definitely the most ambitious um, set I've ever built. The, the cabin scene that I did for Buried in Snow because I wanted to film it in the snow. And when I couldn't do that, I thought maybe I can make it look like I'm in a log cabin with a fireplace and stuff. And I was really surprised with how well that worked. Um, <laughs> like really surprised, but yeah. My whole extended fam wants to buy some land in Tennessee and build houses later down the road. I mean, there's a lot of cool areas here that are out in the country. You don't have to go very far to to do that. Um, where I live is pretty city-like, but I mean, my backyard can pass for a forest. That's where I shot Korok Forest, so that's kind of nice for me. So far, what song do you like the most out of all the ones that I've done? I find it hard to answer this because for me at this point, like the music is, well, I, I think a lot of like, of how I, f about how I feel about it is how I feel about the video. Like, some of the videos visually were, meant a lot to me versus just the audio, so it's hard for me to separate that in my mind. Um, I don't know. <laughs> when you first started filming outside, how did you get over the nerves? I'm way too shy to film in public. Yeah, so I was worried about that. I'm actually a very socially anxious person, um, which is a thing I was worried about for today. So thank you all for, I mean, for so many of you being here and being so nice, but like, um, I tend to get really nervous in those kind of situations, but um, it turns out I have no shame playing in front of people. <laughs> Maybe because I'm used to playing, to performing a lot in general, um, but also I live in Nashville where people are, like everywhere you go, people are playing on the sidewalk, people are busking, there's live music everywhere. Um, you know, people are shooting music videos. So it's like, no one really gave me a hard time. Like. Like it wasn't abnormal that I was out there. Like when I did um, Radical Dreamers, I was at a lake and it was on a Sunday afternoon. Usually I try to go at a time when no one is there, but um, in order for my husband to help me, I had to be on a Sunday. And there were a lot of people there, um, but people were just like walking around and occasionally they'd be like, oh, sounds good, whatever. And really I don't sound good because I'm playing on my terrible violin and I'm outside and I'm trying to look good on camera, which means I don't sound good at all. You know, I'm not like performing for real. But I just don't care, I guess. Um, I got used to it pretty fast, which surprised me. But, you know, you do what you have to do, I guess. <laughs> uh, wait, did I already go through those? Yes. Um, YouTube only fame is so convenient for groceries. <laughs> what? Uh, is there a point where you thought, I really need to kick up the visuals in my videos? Mm, yeah, sort of. Um, I mean, obviously, I was not happy with how my very first videos looked um, and I really wanted to, I would see these videos that other people were doing and be like, I want to do that. So I would try to copy them, but I just did not have first the equipment, but more so the knowledge of how to do it. Cause it's not just about having a nice camera. It's about being able to know how to use it. I'm looking through my videos list right now to see um, if there was a point that I can remember um, thinking that specifically. Um, <laughs> but I know that when I did Ray's theme, that was one that I specifically went all out for in the hopes that significantly increasing the quality of production on my channel would help with subscribers and everything. And it didn't. So that was like a learning point for me that like, 
it doesn't really matter. People enjoy my simple videos just as much as my more elaborate ones. So I don't have to kill myself to make the production quality like a lot. That said, like the production quality of like Dara Dara Docs is still much nicer than my old stuff, but it's also simple. Like there's nothing really f extra fancy about it. We just shot it outside. Um, so I try to keep it like that, like just simple, but well done videos, if that makes sense. Not necessarily go overboard because I don't think it's gonna, it's just gonna be a lot of time. So of course I say that, but then I spent 60 hours working on Game of Thrones, Light of the Seven, because sometimes I just want to, you know? Um, but at this point I've learned I can do that if I want to, but it's not necessarily because I think it will help the channel <laughs> grow. But I think people appreciate it when I go all out to the people that have been following a long time appreciate it. When you play, when you film your playing, do you really try to play well or mostly fake it? Absolutely, I fake it. I, I actually even film in such a way that like it would be impossible for me to play well because normally when I play, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't admit this, but normally when I play, I'm like this. But when I'm on my videos, I do this because you see like I have this huge like double chin issue that the violin exaggerates a lot. And I don't like how I look when I play the, the normal way. So I, I play like this, which I can't actually play well when I do that because I'm not used to it and I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so, um, but I want to, you know, I, I want to look okay in my videos. So what can I do? Um, since it is about the visuals, you know, it's video. Time for a VGM community to live in a village with a dedicated camera crew. I know. I wish we all lived closer because then we could like do that or we could even like rent out a big place to film videos and take turns, you know, filming for each other. That would be nice. Favorite, t <laughs> favorite TV show theme song? I don't know. Um, I'm not good at being put on the spot with these kinds of questions. Uh, do you have any quick recording and mixing tips for violin or good tutorials? I don't have, well, okay, I have done some behind the scenes vlogs you can check out. They're not really tutorials, but I talk a little bit about how I do things on there in kind of a broad way. Uh, I haven't found any real tutorials that I've used for myself much because like I've said before, like a lot of people don't necessarily do things the way I do them. Um, recording violin in a more classical way and not like a commercial way. Um, uh, I record violin in stereo. That's my, that's usually my tip because whenever I record in mono, I hate how it sounds. And when I started recording in stereo, it was a lot better. So that would be the quickest tip I have <laughs> is to try recording things in stereo. Um, SPG, yeah, you do have a cousin that lives here in Nashville. I work with her. I mean, we talked about this, but I'm telling everyone else. It was so funny. I've, I've worked with her since I moved here. And then at some point we realized um, she's SPG's cousin. And uh, yeah, so small world. Ro, she actually made a really cool video getting started recording a few months ago. Oh, right, I made that one. I forgot about that. That was more for like remote recording, but it's true. It's about kind of getting started in recording from home in general. So yeah, um, if you go to my channel page, there's a, a bunch of little categories and one is like vlogs and announcements. So that's where all my speaking videos are and it will be in there. It's like getting started with home recording or something. Um, so that's where I definitely go in the most in depth as far as that goes. How much did you spend making a video? I don't, um, mm, it depends. I, I try to limit my spending on videos because it, it adds up really fast and I'd rather spend it on gear than like specific videos. I don't hire anyone to film or anything like that. I don't have that kind of budget. Um, so most of the money I spend goes into cosplay and props or if I need specific things for videos. Like um, I did rent out a church for flowers blooming in the church because I felt that was important. That's probably the most I've spent in, in terms of that. Um, but also whenever I make a cosplay, it usually does cost a bit of money. Um, so when I did like Aerith's theme, Jesse's theme, um, when I did Game of Thrones Light of the Seven, I did buy a dress for that. And I also bought a ton of candles and also that green stuff that I used to make like the wildfire. Is that what it's called in Game of Thrones? I bought a lot of stuff for that one. Um, 
but I have a Patreon uh, where people support me there, and that's what that money goes towards so that I can go all out when I need to without feeling like I'm spending my own money that I need for food and rent. What microphones do you, or headphones do you use for recording? So I have these, these are Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros. I got them kind of recently and they're open backed. I use them for mixing. Um, sometimes I use them for recording when I'm being lazy, but the sound bleeds a little, so they're not ideal for that. Um, these are the headphones that I used for everything prior to that for many years, including mixing my album, Audio-Technica ATH M30X. A lot of people have M50X, those are popular, but, and I don't know how those compared to, to these, um, so maybe they're better. Um, for, the thing is that for recording, you don't need good f headphones. For mixing, you do. For recording, you just need something that you can hear yourself well and that doesn't leak sound. So that could be anything, really. Um, I love your Ray's theme, super virtuosic. Thanks, SPG. I, um, yeah, that was definitely, oh, uh, I'm so bad at managing this stuff, but <laughs> someone asked on Twitter, I think this is the last of my Twitter questions, so I can rest easy. Emil asked, out of all your VGM covers, which one do you think is your most technically challenging and why, and which is the hardest piece you've ever learned? So definitely Ray's theme is the most technically challenging I've ever written for myself. Um, I lifted a lot of stuff from, like directly from violin concertos, like the Brahms concerto, in like inspiration for that. Um, it took me months to do that and to learn it, um, to be able to actually play it well. Um, the hardest piece I ever learned, period, though, is uh, Bartok's Second Violin Concerto, which I did for my final graduate recital in uh, music conservatory. So it's really hard, but I love it. I love it so much. Ray's theme was definitely fun to watch, though. Thanks. Yeah, that one was fun to make. And I think it's still, to this day, the only one that I've done where, like, the lighting mood changes like three times within the video. I had to do different lighting setups and background setups, which was a lot of work. Um, but also, uh, I mean, I guess I did that for Light of, uh, Light of the Seven a little bit, but it was still all black backdrop, so it was easier. Race theme was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot going on in that one. Plus one to knowing how to use the equipment. It's incredible how much quality can improve just by knowing how to use what you have. Exactly, yeah. Um, Microphone placement matters so much, but especially with the camera too, like you can get really bad results with a good camera if you don't know how to light things well. Lighting is the most important thing in my opinion when it comes to video. Uh, yeah. Uh, did she talk a little bit about the mixing? Was that about like my mixing in general? Not sure, might be one for Discord. Yes, feel again, I'll plug our Discord. Feel free to join. Uh, links are in the description of this video. Uh, we have a Discord where you can ask me anything, anytime. And, um, wait, was that? Oh, and also, um, this live stream I was doing for YouTube because it's a YouTube milestone, but in the future I will be streaming on Twitch, probably. I say probably because, I mean, definitely Twitch, but probably more live streaming in the future. I'm just not entirely sure what I'm going to do for that yet. But if you want to follow for future live streams, uh, that link is also in the description, twitch.tv slash Viopaddy. All my socials are slash Viopaddy, so that makes it easy. Um, because yeah, I think that will be fun since I spend so much time figuring out this setup and it's going so well today. So that gives me confidence to do streaming in the future. But anyway, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that before before forgetting. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes. Video faker twinsies. Yeah, the violin double ch chin is like a real thing. Um, but don't you also have a, a violin that like has a different kind of chin rest or maybe no chin rest at all? Because I've thought about that just for the sake of, um, you know, having to avoid this problem. <laughs> Ah, oh, sad, Irene. I miss you too. I know. This January feels like forever ago. Like, was that really this year? <laughs> my favorite thing about guitars is that it can cover my gut too. <laughs> I guess that would be helpful. Um, 
Will there be some Witcher 3 music in the future? You know, I'm not familiar with the Witcher stuff at all, except for the Netflix show. <laughs> um, so probably not. I don't usually do music from stuff I don't know, unless I'm super into the music for some reason, which which isn't to say I've, I've done lots of stuff on my channel from games I haven't played, but I have to be like really into the music. So maybe if I'm, if I become familiar with it, I may, like if I hear a track that, send me tracks as suggestions. I don't take requests, but I've, done a lot of videos where someone has sent me a track that I didn't know and I was like, oh, that would be great. So if you have one that you think would fit well for me, feel free to comment it somewhere or in the Discord or something. Um, Cause I'm always looking for new stuff. Um, so yeah. I think the M50s are closed back and 30s are open. 30s are closed. They're, they're all closed. Um, they're just like the cheaper model. So I don't know how it is in terms of, I've heard the 50s are boomier. Uh -oh. 30s are on ear, 50s are over ear. I think they are over ear. They're over my ears. Or, yeah. Because I don't like when they sit on my ears either. Um, I think they look the same. I think they're just lesser quality <laughs> or different. Uh, what distributor What distributor do you use? And how long did it take for you to make a decent income from <laughs> your music? Uh, well... <clears throat> I'm starting out and wondering if it's possible to actually live off of it. Oh, everyone's answering for me. I use Sounddrop. A lot of these, us use Sounddrop. I highly recommend them because um, they take a little percentage of your income, which means, or of your revenue, which means they want you to do well so that they make money and you don't have to pay any fees. I don't like the companies that do yearly fees because um, I just don't like that. I don't like being stuck in something like that. Um, and I like the Sounddrop team. I've had good, um, good experiences with them. Uh, how long did it take to de make decent income from your music? You know, it, it depends on what you mean by that. If you mean like my YouTube stuff, like I'm still waiting on that, like, and also how you define decent. Um, I am a full-time musician, but most of my income comes from like recording and like studio recording professionally and performing in that way. Um, but, um, my independent music income, which is like YouTube, Spotify, especially Patreon, um, all of that stuff is continually growing so i do um i do hope that it will be more in the future uh but i know lots of people who make money doing the youtube thing um but it does take time and a lot of work uh cooking streams were you in the Discord when we talked about this? Is that why you're bringing it up? I'm terrible at cooking. Um, so I don't know. Maybe if we hit like a huge milestone or something, then I, you know, if like, like a milestone I don't think we'll actually hit, if we actually do hit it, then yes, I could do something like that. Because um, I'm not very good at cooking. Also, like, it took me a long time to get this set up. I can't imagine how I would move it to do a cooking stream. Like, I'm still trying to figure out even if I could do gaming streams because. None of my gaming stuff is up here, so I don't know. <laughs> I love your music and videos and your sheet music. Helped me so much for learning the violin. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I am happy to have some of my sheet music up now on Sheet Music Plus. Also, I recently did a bunch of arrangements for Materia Collective for music from Undertale and Deltarune. So if you guys are interested in that, um, it's so rare for me to be able to actually have my arrangements out for sale. Um, so that was really fun to work on those. Uh, so now that there's, yeah, if you play violin and like Undertale and Deltarune, there's all these arrangements up that I did. You can check those out. I don't have links for those, but um, it should be easy to find um, if you Google it. That was a great Witcher 3 track. Yeah, send it to me. Um, sure. I have a Google submission form somewhere for request, not requests, for suggestions. <laughs> no guarantee I will do it. Just suggestions. Hmm. Are you Elvin Ra? Uh, decent income. I can buy my own coffee now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is about it is that like I appreciate that it's it's passive income. So I don't have at a certain point I don't have to do anything for it, which is nice, because um, all of my performing and recording income I have to actually do work in order to get that money. <laughs> Um, so having more passive income that's growing is really great and ideal. Collab cooking stream race. 
What does that even mean? Oh, I'm late. You already played something on live. Could you show some live fragment themes? I'd love to see how you do it on live. Um, I was just showing old videos. I'm not actually playing today because this was complicated enough for me to set up. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do any live playing in the future either. Like um, Twitch is where I'm going to be doing any future live streaming. Links in the video description. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm up for live performing and requests and stuff like that. So we'll have to see. Um, we can definitely show another video, though. You heard her fellas Let's get it done. Speaking of, the Undertale five-year anniversary is coming up. Yeah, I know. So that's also the anniversary of when I did Bone Trousel, my only Undertale video so far. Um, that was a couple years ago. That was a fun one. Uh, <laughs> passive income is the best kind, yeah. Two people challenged to make a sandwich without setting kitchen on fire. Winner gets the other person's sandwich. But we don't live anywhere near close to each other, Ro. Like, how would we do that? Besides, you're definitely going to win because you're so much better at cooking than me. <laughs> By decent income, I mean being able to afford three-ply toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, it's all relative to how you define decent income. Uh, you could slash should totally play Violent Life. Uh, we'll see. I've gotten so used to not ever playing live, like it used to be my entire career was playing live in concerts and stuff, though not usually solo, but I actually did used to have a violin and cello duo ensemble with Nick Gold, who's the cellist for my quartet for all these things, most of the older things. We were trying to make it as a duo group, we were called the Elliston duo, and we, per we performed stuff like the Ravel and Kodai duos and really hard stuff, but that was so much work and it's really hard to get a chamber group going. Um, so I don't know, performing live on stream, if I, it depends, it depends. I'll, I'll figure it out, you know, I, I need to ease into streaming. At least this was a nice, this was a very nice first stream. So many people came and everyone was nice and very minimal. Um, well, the only issues were my, my own issues, no actual tech issues. <laughs> If the win criteria is to not set the kitchen on fire, I don't know if eating the other person's sandwich is a reward. <laughs> I don't think I've ever set a kitchen on fire. I will say that, just the bookshelf. <laughs> oh, string flare gamer already beat me to that. Um, take it from me, people are extremely forgiving. Yeah, I know, I have seen other people's live streaming uh, performances to kind of check out what it's like. So I know it's different. I'm such a perfectionist though now. I feel like I I really strive to record really well for my videos. And if I did stuff live, it would, I don't know. It's like people would think I, I was a total fake maybe because I don't have time to like really practice. <laughs> I usually just sight read this stuff. Um, yeah. Playing live weekly was exciting and lucrative for me in my twenties, but it got exhausting with age. Yeah, I'm also no longer in my twenties. So I feel that. <laughs> Will you, re uh, will you remaster another of your old videos like Gusty Garden, one of my favorites? I definitely want to remake some older videos. Um, Fairy Fountain is at the top of my list. We, we listened to that one earlier. Um, Gusty Garden would be harder because um, I haven't done string quartets as much lately because I wasn't happy with the audio quality I was able to get. Um, and it required a lot of logistics. So I said I wouldn't do any more string quartet, live string quartet recording, like which is what those were until I can afford to do, to like rent out a studio and have some helpers because having to bring all the lighting and equipment, all the v audio equipment, set everything up, self engineer while also playing first violin and like directing the group of people who, by the way, don't know this music at all. So like, I have to actually like, you know, they're not familiar with it. Um, so it's a lot of work for one person and it was just always too stressful for me and I was never happy with the quality I would get. Um, so that is on my list when I have more of a budget to do some real nice string quartet stuff, maybe remakes of the older ones. Um, yeah, because it's it's too hard on me <laughs> to do everything by myself. Mm. I see tons of sight reading streams. People are mind blown when you could play a song at all. That's true. I mean, I take for granted how good of a sight reader I am, I guess. Um, so maybe if it was something casual like that, 
like I saw um, anime VV just like sight reading through the the Undertale uh, Delta Rune arrangements that I did for Materia like when those came out I was like oh I mean this this is fun and chill I wouldn't feel so bad then if it wasn't like a real performance you know if it was just messing around um yeah so yeah who knows I thought I would never ever stream anything ever ever <laughs> and look I'm here doing this and actually enjoying it so um yeah I mean I'll probably just start out doing kind of behind the scenes stuff on Twitch like showing my uh I don't know like maybe doing some video editing or mixing or stuff like that um and then we'll see because I have to, I would have to figure out a different kind of setup for if I was going to be playing different than what I have right now um so yeah should we watch another video uh I feel bad Eric missed the ones we watched before so maybe we should watch another one does anyone have any requests I have some highlighted here I have actually one I wanted to show was Korok Forest because that was our very first outdoor video and there was a lot of there was a lot that went on into that one I did a lot of prop building and cosplay and other behind the scenes stuff um, there's also Ray's theme Light of the Seven these are like my favorites I guess in terms of like ones I can show and actually talk stuff about them that are interesting the harmonies and overtones on your quartet videos were exemplary just saying oh thank you um, I mean I do like the arrangements I did it's more an issue of the recording quality not being up to what I would want in, more, in mind Korok video is lovely. I used to show that to my students. Oh, thanks. I actually have a lot of friends, like, I would get comments from, like, my friends in high school and stuff that would show it to their kids. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cute. Oh, thanks, Ro. Thanks so much for being here and, and also helping me out getting this all set up. Yeah, it means a lot. Thank you. Okay, let's do Korok Forest. Um, let me get back to my little playlist here because that was a fun one. I did a lot of... Um, I spent the, the better part of a year planning that one, honestly. It was a lot, <laughs> but it was fun. Okay. Did you all hear that? <laughs> there was a very loud crash behind me and I don't know what it was, <laughs> but Freya has been suspiciously absent from the room for some time so I'm gonna assume it's fine you know the stream's still running so <laughs> I guess I'll see you later I, w I wish she was around more I thought she would be hanging out but okay um so Korok Forest a little bit of background this was the very first outdoor video I did and um all right, thanks for stopping by, String Player Gamer. Have a great Sunday, too. Um, I'd filmed this one in my backyard by myself because that was what I had to do, and I spent the better part of a year planning it because I wanted to film something outside, and I thought this would be a good one because Korok Forest. Um, forest is the easiest thing for me to get in Tennessee to fake a <laughs> background. And I thought it would be fun because, you know, if you're familiar with Breath of the Wild and like the Koroks, like there's all these little things that you can do with the different skits, like all the like the pinwheels and the like circle of rocks and all the little different puzzles that they put. So I thought it'd be fun to put that in a video. And I also was interested in making another Link cosplay. I already made the green one a long time ago, but this one was, you know, a different one. And so that was fun to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess I'll show it and then answer questions later because I'm certain there will be some, but here we go. Thank you. 
All right. It's been a while since I watched that one, actually. Um, a few questions I saw pop up. Um, I really like the depth of focus on this one. So this is the very first video that I did any B-roll for because it was my first outdoor video and I thought, you know, I'm not like Taylor Davis. I'm not gonna have amazing outdoor footage with a film crew. So I probably want other filler shots in order to like make it still look okay, even if um, <laughs> even if the the tripod shots I take outside are you know garbage. So I did. I took all these shots, um, you know, just like scenic shots, and that was when I actually the turning point was like I got a 50 millimeter lens, and that made all the difference <laughs> in terms of being able to get nice shots for that. The actual music shots I couldn't film with the 50 millimeter because I was by myself and there was no way to like camera had to be so far away, you know, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was the MVP of this video, the, the lens. Um, how old is your cat? Freya is four years old. We also have another cat who is about a year old and she is not up here because she destroys things and I didn't want any kind of accidents like that on the first stream. Such nice lighting and little shots. Thank you. Did you ever play Streets of Rage 2 on Sega Genesis? I I didn't. I didn't have a Sega Genesis growing up. I've never played any of those games. You were having so much fun with this one. Yeah, so this is kind of why I prefer to do things that I know because I couldn't have done this video if I wasn't a fan of Breath of the Wild. Um, you know, if I didn't if I hadn't put so many hours into that game and really gotten into it and wanted to do it just for the sake of doing it. Um, you know, I, I made the cosplay. I had to buy a bunch of stuff. I bought the the, the goddess statue, the the backpack, the... I already own the, the sword, um, <laughs> but I've made the cosplay. I made the pinwheels. Um, it's like there was so much that went into this. And over the course of so many months... Oh, the Korok mask, too. I made that. Um, don't forget to hydrate. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have that sword. It's so heavy. It is heavy. It's like a real sword. And so I had a hard time like lifting it for this shot. Um, though I did have to fake trying to like pull it out of the ground because it was actually just in a trash can. Um, that was the only way I could get it propped up. So I just have to pretend that I was trying to get it up, but it was still heavy to actually hold it above my head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, for this one, I really enjoyed like trying to see how much I could stick in there, like how many references to the game. Um, it was also the first time I ever did any storyboarding, so that was fun. I do that a lot now with videos that I do. I'm really starting to lose my voice, so <clears throat> probably going to wrap this up in a bit. If anyone has any last, you know, few questions while we're here, let me put some music back on. I forgot we had like turned it off for a while. But, um, what's your favorite ice cream? I am a chocolate girl. I'm so boring. If, if there is any kind of dessert that needs to be chosen, I always choose chocolate. But my backup favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip, which is kind of unusual, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Streets of Rage, yeah, maybe the style wouldn't work for me. I don't know. I'm not very familiar with it, but I could check it out for sure. Oh, oh, Neil, you overslept. That's okay. I'm sure you could watch the, the video later. I did answer your question earlier. <laughs> How's the weather over there? Today's going to be 111. Yikes. Ugh, yeah, it's been pretty hot, but I think it's actually supposed to be a little cool this weekend. Maybe? It's not going to get really cold here until like at least November, um, but let me see. Feels like 86 degrees, which is actually not bad for right now. Do you have any idea for the next big step for your channel? What do you mean by big step? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, me starting to stream is probably a big enough step, I guess. Um, it's kind of a different direction for me. Um, I do have some album ideas, so probably that, I guess, if that's what you consider for my channel. Um, but I'm trying to f narrow it down, because I had a big album that I wanted to do this year that just kind of got completely scrapped. 
so I'm trying to figure out some other things I can do in the meantime. Do you play any other stringed instruments? Uh, just viola. Not very well, but I play it for videos sometimes. Do you plan on getting a new violin sometime? Oh, I wish. Um, if I had at least another $20,000 lying around. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, at this point I would need to get a loan to get a new violin, which um, getting a house is higher on the priority list currently. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe piano. Oh, I don't consider piano a stringed instrument, but yes, um, I do play piano sort of. Not very well, in my opinion. Um, I just play it good enough to, like, do YouTube things. Happy Sunday anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. There's still so many people here. I'm really surprised. Like, I'm really feeling the love, you guys. Do you think you'll ever do more Donkey Kong Country music? Your DKC2 cover was amazing. Yes! Well, I love Donkey Kong Country. And... I also met David Wise this year at MAGFest, so that was super cool. He's very nice. And he actually saw my Crooks March cover on Twitter and said something nice, so that was also very cool. But, um, yeah, the thing about Donkey Kong Country is that the style of the music doesn't really fit very well with what I can do currently. Like, a lot of them have that kind of beat groove thing, which is awesome, but I don't know how to kind of do that. And so I did Crook's March because it was the most orchestral thing, like in the soundtracks. Um, so that made it a lot easier for me to do that. Um, yeah, Grand Kirkhope seems nice. I haven't met him, but yeah, I mean, I know a lot of, of you guys have, and he seems super cool as well. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I had another, I had another, um, track that I was, well, it's been in the works for years. I start tracks and then I abandon them for years and then I finally finish them later, so we'll see. I have some ideas for Tanya Kong Country, they're just kind of hard to pull off and that's why I haven't done them, but hopefully I'll f be able to fix that soon. It's very synthy too, yeah. I mean, I've thought about maybe if I collab I might be able to, to do it better, but I gotta think about it, um, come up with an idea. <laughs> Collab with PPF or DK DKC. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> I don't really know him, but... Have you heard any of the OST for Ghost of Tsushima? Uh, no. However, I may have played on some of it. I'm actually not sure. Uh, I, I definitely played for trailers for E3 for Ghost of Sh Tsushima. Or for something for it, but they don't always tell us what things are for. I mean, I knew it was for that game, but I didn't know what we were actually recording, so... Uh, what I've seen of the game looks really beautiful, though. Um, yeah, I'm gonna retract that. Don't say that I played for it, because I'm not sure, but um, I did play for one of the trailers. Um, so that's all I know of the music for it. Mm. No worries, even if you don't do more. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, but I would like to do more. Sometimes I do something from a certain series where I know I probably will never do it again. So I just do one thing from it to be like, okay, I did it. But then the second I do it, everyone is like, oh, do this one too. And so I feel bad. <laughs> like, should I not have done it at all? Because um, I don't want to give people hope either if um, I'm not planning to return to it. Yeah, um, Grant is super supportive of VGM people. Yeah, I, I've seen that, yeah. He and David Wise too, they, they're both really active on Twitter. Um, which is so cool. You know, it's nice getting feedback from the people who actually wrote the thing. So. Oh, well, all right. I'm a bit exhausted <laughs> and overwhelmed right now. Um, oh, hi, Cicelis. I don't know how to pronounce your username, but I see you there. Thank you for the congratulations. Um, oh, Elder Scrolls Online. I didn't know what that stood for. Yeah, um have some plans to play things like Bahu and Cielo de Estrellas, the tango piece they did before, or the Brazil tune. Um, you mean like on stream right now? <laughs> I don't know, if people want to do more videos, I think my throat is like about to lose it. Oh, Primrose is playing right now, I didn't realize that because I can't actually hear what I'm playing in the background. I listened to it all the time. Thank, thank you! 
Primrose is like one of my first really popular Spotify tracks, surprisingly. It wasn't as popular on YouTube, but somehow it just took off on Spotify and like, I mean, that's great. I'm glad people are enjoying it. Oh. You're right, it is Cyrus's theme. <laughs> I guess it was Primrose before, probably. <laughs> I have to figure out a way that I can like listen to everything without having to have headphones on all the time. I don't know if there is a way. I'm still so new at this streaming thing. But yeah. Ugh. Both very nice character themes. I know, I would have done them all if I could. I did a lot of stuff from Octopath Traveler, but everyone liked it. And I still, I still have Alfin's theme that I wanted to do. I think the Octopath thing is because it was on Spotify for the first year. That's true. I do have a lot of success when I do that. Like, my Fire Emblem Three Houses stuff was more popular too as well, but... But just Primrose, though, I did a lot of Octopath Traveler and that one took off for some reason. Then again, it was the first one I did, so you may be right. You could do a small ear, but yeah, I know. I, I should. In the future, I will plan, but this was already so much to... I was just gonna do chat. And then I thought, well, it's an anniversary, maybe it'd be fun to watch old videos. And then it was like a whole other thing. I had to figure out how I was gonna do managing all the windows and, <laughs> and stuff. Streaming is hard. This is like a whole new thing for me. Everyone makes it look so easy. <laughs> What's your favorite OST in, in Final Fantasy VII? You mean my favorite track? Um... Too hard to choose. Um, <laughs> the first, okay, well, yeah, it's it's hard to choose. Um, and I, for some reason, whenever people put me on the spot like this, I always completely blank out. <laughs> and then I feel bad at like, what if I say a, a track that I really, that really is not my favorite, then I'll feel bad later. Uh, like it really matters that, that much, you know, that I'm accurate, but like, um, the first time I became familiar with Final Fantasy VII, the first time I played with played through it, um, the the reunion track actually really stood out to me a lot, and that's a very underrated track. And if you'll notice, I did that pretty early on in my channel uh, for the for Materia Collective's debut album called Materia. Um, I remember because I really wanted to do that track and I was like, I want to grab it before anyone else does. So I was like the second person to sign up to claim Reunion. I mean, I, I was the only person that claimed it. I was the only person that wanted it. <laughs> but it's also one of my favorite videos that I've done for some, something about that theme. I really like waltzes and, this, and I really like uh, dark waltzes and something about that kind of triggered that in me. Also has this kind of French, like classical French vibe, classical music French vibe, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're enjoying the stream, really. Um, I really appreciate that it doesn't seem like I'm new at this. <laughs> I really, I really do. Um, remember to take a break whenever you do. That's, I appreciate it. Um, I probably will wrap things up soon because, um, I don't know, there's still a lot of people watching, but at least chat is not nearly as, a, like, as it was in the beginning. It was really hard for me to keep up, so. Don't kill your throat streaming for us. I kind of feel like that ship has sailed at this point. <laughs> the thing is, you know, whenever I do like speaking videos, my throat always hurts the next day. And I'm like, what am I doing? And then I thought maybe I'm like projecting too much, like trying to speak loud because I'm naturally a very soft spoken person. <laughs> so I really tried to practice like not use, speaking from my diaphragm, I don't know, instead of my throat. But then, then like everyone showed up and I got really, overwhelmed and I think that all went out the window so it's fine it's Sunday and tomorrow's Labor Day and it's not like I'm going out to see anybody <laughs> so I don't have to talk the rest of the week so but yeah I really I don't know how streamers do it you know streaming for like five hours at a time like every day props to those people I never choose favorites I just say these are some of my favorites yeah I usually do that too or I'll say like a specific kind of favorite, like I said, like this was the first one that jumped out to me that I was inspired by. Not necessarily my favorite, just, yeah. Oh no, I only had three viewers and I accidentally closed the chat 10 minutes and yeah, it, 
Yeah, I did a lot of test streams to prepare, but having the chat is like a whole new element and trying to like make sure that I don't miss anything, but also like look at the camera and not just the chat. <laughs> I was doing two hours like twice a week for a while and even that was hard. Yeah, I mean, you know, even when I was like looking at Twitch, like even looking at the requirements for affiliate and stuff, I'm like seven different days and like, it's just, yeah, that's hard. I don't know if I'll ever do that, if I'll ever get to that point. I guess it depends on how I feel about it, but I'm not planning to grow a Twitch channel. I already have enough to do with YouTube, but it just might be another fun outlet for me. And I've been more interested in Twitch in general since quarantine started. Like I didn't used to watch Twitch at all. I never really got it, but now I do. <laughs> now I really do and I watch Twitch like every day. Freya's theme seems up your alley. Have you, do you like the FF9 soundtrack at all? Do you know that my cat's name is Freya? Did you see that? Because <laughs> that alone has made me consider it because then maybe I could use Freya in the video. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I haven't played FF9. She was not named after Freya per se, but my friend Randy, who was in the chat earlier, probably not anymore, but um, he actually suggested the name to me and I liked the name. I was like, I know it's a Final Fantasy name, even though I don't know the reference, that makes it cool, so... <laughs> I've been trying to find more ways to include her into my videos. It would help if she didn't run away every time I played the violin because, you know, like I, I usually film in front of the window and she likes to sit at the window. So like she could just be in the background, but no, she won't cooperate. On the other hand, the other cat that we just got and her name is Piper, she's about a year old. She is not afraid of the violin at all. She's not afraid of the piano. She's not afraid of anything. She, uh, she's probably gonna destroy this piano, honestly. And, um. So there might be better chances to keep her, to have her in videos more casually. Um, okay, missed a few things while I was rambling. Hmm. It's not like I'm going out to see anybody ever. Yeah, I know. It's like, if I wasn't here, if I didn't have my cats to talk to all day, well, and my husband, but I mean, he works. So it's mostly just me and the cats during the day. It's like, I wouldn't say anything at all out loud ever for the past few months. What are the pictures that you have behind? I see in some videos. Um, do you mean these pictures on the wall? I'm actually going to do a studio tour soon. Um, I've been meaning to do it for a while, but then I upgraded a bunch of stuff and thought I would wait until I was a little more settled. Um, so, so yeah, I'll definitely um, introduce all those, but for now. So this is my wall of album art. Um, I started collecting canvas prints of um, albums that meant a lot to me or that I felt like I contributed to significantly. Um, and so that's what those are. Like now I've been in so many that it's like I have to be really choosy about which ones I put because I've run out of wall space. But um, you can see on the bottom from here, this is Johto Legends, Masquerada, which was the very first game soundtrack I played on as a soloist. Um, so that meant a lot to me. And then this one is the Materia Fate, Majora's Mask tribute, and then up here is, is a Chrono Trigger album. Then this, this is weird looking at myself doing this in reverse. <laughs> um, the one in the middle is um, my album, Reminiscence, and then this one is Project Estadi's Darkness, and then there's another row above that that you can't see. <laughs> but I'll do all that in my studio tour. I'll show the whole room and everything. So that might be fun. Okay. Um, Freya's theme featuring Freya. Yeah, that's the plan. Maybe I really should think about it. I think the theme, I just couldn't think of what I would do with it per se, but I haven't really spent a lot of time thinking about it. Oh, thanks. Thanks for stopping by, Robbie. I hope it, uh, if you're still here, hope I didn't keep you from your, your video premiere. It was also today, I know. Um, air violin while she's on the window. You know, it's funny because when I set up, she's always in the middle of everything. So, I could t I take videos of like her just on the on the window and whatever, and if I had the green screen out, she likes to play in it too. She likes to um, she likes to dart in and out of the the screen, and it's funny, but she never does that on purpose. Like when I'm ready, you know. What mic are you using now? I'm using a Blue Yeti, because that's the only USB mic I have, and uh, 
I didn't want to invest too much in streaming stuff before I knew if I was going to be really into it or not. Um, and a lot of people use it, I guess, so it's fine. It's what I use for, well, it's what I used to use for speaking videos all the time. And then I got one of those little Rode mics that you plug into the camera. So that's what I use lately, but I used to always use the Yeti. You're making it look easy though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you ever create original music? Not really, not in the sense that most people refer to original music. Um, I composed a lot when I was in school. I thought I might be a composer a little bit, <laughs> but I realized I'm more interested in orchestrating and arranging other music than creating it myself. I'm really bad at finishing creating music, but maybe in the future I might. Like I've had ideas to do an original album. It's just kind of like, I can't prioritize it because there are other things I want to do and I know people will be more interested in those things. So maybe eventually I might revisit that. You inspire me a lot to keep trying to learn a violin. Oh, thank you. It really means a lot when people say stuff like that, like that I inspire them to practice or to start learning. I speak Spanish, so excuse me mistakes. Well, I know Spanish, sort of. I am actually uh, Cuban on my mom's side. I'm not fluent in Spanish though, but if you write a comment in Spanish, I will be able to understand it, probably. Uh, oh my gosh, mom. <laughs> Y'all, my mom is in the chat, so be nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe this. <laughs> uh, that was funny too, because I, I think I saw like my fifth grade um, middle school teacher in the chat at the very beginning. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so strange to see people just randomly in my chat like this. Um, but hi, mom. I guess you're all, you're all watching at home. <laughs> Everyone's talking to my mom now. It's okay. Give me a rest here. <laughs> so you all know, my mom recently learned how to edit videos herself. Uh, I taught her how to use Final Cut Pro, which is what I use to make videos. And she learned it really fast, and now she's editing all these videos for all her friends and all her people she works for. And she's like gonna be better at, better at it than me in no time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think, oh wait, do I still have any more water? <laughs> uh, my mom is proud of me, she's very supportive. My family are very supportive. I'm lucky because usually when you're a musician you do not have supportive family. <laughs> um, but she was very supportive of my violin and music career. Sorry, Karis, but I'm driving. Why are you writing in the chat if you're driving? <laughs> oh my gosh, mom. <laughs> Please be safe. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I am a little disappointed that Freya is not around more. I really thought she was gonna be the star of the stream, but she's not here. Oh well. She's gonna be final cutting in the car soon enough. <laughs> uh, well, thank you all so much for being here. This has been such a nice stream, such a nice first stream. I'm like super hyped now. Um, <laughs> Freya really knocked something down. No, well, she locked something in the other room. I have no idea what she knocked over. Um, if she knocked something in here, at least it would have been entertaining. Actually, like, she always climbs up to that bookshelf and knocks down whatever is up there. So you see the little chocobo? It's always on the floor. And then she'll climb on the little acoustic panel. So I really thought she was going to do all that, because she always does that when I'm on, like, a Zoom call or something. She's been really well behaved. Unfortunately. <laughs> Mm, 
Well, next time, next time I'll have both of my cats on stream, and then there will definitely be more entertaining accidents, for sure. I'm glad you can make it too. I saw so many familiar names and faces today. It's really heartwarming. Like when I was planning this thing, and part of me wanted to start streaming just kind of like secretly without telling anyone until I got more practice, but then I was like, well, if I make a big event for it, people are more likely to come. But then it's like when you're planning a big party and buying all this food and drinks, and then like, what if no one shows up, you know? <laughs> Actually, that's how I used to feel when I had recitals in school, because it's like, it's really nerve wracking to have a recital. I'm like, are people gonna come? Are all my friends gonna come? So. I really appreciate all of you guys showing up. It means a lot. <laughs> I feel very supported right now. Is it playing me now? Yeah. So this is actually a song that, um, it's a tango song. I do a lot of, or I used to do a lot of tango dancing before COVID. And um, it's a tango valse. Uh, the tango like waltz is a genre of tango dance and um, they actually use this in our tango playlist for events so I'd be there and hearing myself playing while dancing so that was fun it was a fun song uh, thanks you all I'm so glad you could be here I miss Milonga's <gasps> do you do tango too? no one knows what a milonga is unless Unless you're a tangero. We're all honored to be part of such a great event. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been a long time for me too, but I used to do it a lot. Um, I've done a lot of dance. I did ballet when I was young. I did, I was a majorette. I did a bunch of different things. Taught salsa in college, but. Oh, thanks for coming, Randy. I hope you guys have a good Sunday with the family. Um, blues fusion. Okay, so I'm a little familiar with blues dancing. Um, I used to go to music festivals all the time in, every summer. And whenever I was there, I'd end up somehow teaching everyone how to salsa dance because, I don't know, people were interested and it was a fun thing to do. And one time I met someone there who was into blues dancing and somehow like I could follow blues like he was also into swing which I could never follow but blues I could follow based on like the kind of salsa that I knew at the time so we did that like all summer and it was so fun I don't really know how to do it but I was just like faking it following it you know <laughs> salsa is always weirdly hard for me it can be it's a lot faster um but since I'm Cuban it's a little more closer to my uh my <laughs> familiarity <laughs> Um, and I listen to salsa music a lot, just in general. It's, uh, it's my jam. Yeah, blues is nice. I, uh, I miss dancing so much. <laughs> That's one thing I would love to do. Um, oh, I just realized I forgot to answer Rose's question that he, and he's not here anymore, but I'll answer it anyway, sort of. Um, it was about what you would do if, what I would do if I had like an unlimited budget for a video. One of the ideas I had was to incorporate dance into videos because no one really does that. And it's not even like, like it would be its own genre of um, music video. Like I don't even know how to search for that. Every now and then I see someone do some kind of collab with a dancer and it's so cool. And I would like to do that because dance has been a big part of my life and it would be fun one day after COVID and when I have maybe more of a budget to save up for that. So, okay, I'm officially out of water now, so <laughs> I'm gonna need to wrap it up, but oh, one more question. What would be a good video game song to tango to? So the nice thing about tango is that you can tango to anything, honestly. Um, you can tango to like, like the way that the dance is, it kind of works with anything. Um, like actually at my wedding, we, we did tango to, uh, like a Sinatra song. <laughs> like those work really well for that. Um, the problem with like video game songs to tango to is like, if you're talking like tango tango, like most video games use like kind of cliche fake tango. It's not like real tango. Um, <laughs> but uh, actually there is a song in 
Final Fantasy X called Movement in Green that definitely has that Neo Tango vibe. No, uh, Nuevo Tango vibe. It's like a kind of genre that's more new age, uh, not new age. I'm using the totally like wrong words right now because I'm tired, but um, I mean, it's got like a, bond a bandoneon in it. So like, I don't know. Hi, Patrick. Yeah. We're about to wrap this up probably, but thanks for coming by. You can watch the, the video later. Um, I enjoy the stream with a big pizza and a little cheesecake. That sounds awesome. I'm definitely going to eat after this because I scheduled this during my lunchtime basically, so I'm gonna I'm gonna eat a lot of food after. Thanks for answering all our questions. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you all enjoyed this so much. Um, Cause I've done, I've done some Q and A's before. I never know like what people are gonna be interested to, to talk about or to see. Um, <laughs> hi, Dad. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Family crashing the stream. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks for helping me get through 2020. I appreciate that, and honestly, you all have helped me get through 2020 because having my um, having my channel to focus on because like I said I, I wanted to, to do this big album this year and I just couldn't do that and I was so bummed and I was also so uninspired and demotivated um, but I had all these videos that I had filmed with Paula to do for our album so I was able to put those out and somehow like still like it was the only way that I was able to like kind of make it through is to focus on my creative work even when I wasn't really inspired so thank you all because without you guys I would not be able to do any of this or I mean I would be able to but like it's not very fun when no one is watching like I mean it can be demoralizing when you spend a lot of time making some something and then there's no response so I really appreciate the audience I have on here so much you have no idea so so much oh I'm glad it helped you focus on your art you know well I'm trying to get into art this year that's that's the thing I'm trying for me I have an iPad Pro with Procreate, so I'm trying to learn how to get back into digital art. I used to sketch a lot as a kid, but I've never done digital art and not in anything in a long time, so. Um, so I don't know, I find it really fun so far. <laughs> I can't believe that I inspire people. That still is weird to me. <laughs> Yeah, I like Procreate a lot. I've used it enough to know that like I like the program. I just don't know. I just don't like my art yet. <laughs> um, but I will learn. I'm taking a little Udemy class. It's pretty good. So maybe I'll be able to draw some of my own things for my artwork or for the channel. Maybe. Maybe I'll start hiring people to do that because I did draw my own art for Reminiscence and it took me way too long to do that and it's like I don't have time to do this I should just hire a professional <laughs> should we start a counter on how many times Patty says she's leaving and stays on I don't know how to end this like um how, how do you end a stream and if people keep asking questions I, I say I'm gonna end it because people stop talking I'm like well I don't want to I don't want to just keep it going if no one is saying anything but then people start asking questions Did I get 120 stars on Super Mario World? <laughs> probably Super Mario World, Super Mario 64. Uh, probably not. Um, I'm not very good at action games, and Super Mario 64 in particular was one that I used to play with my cousin growing up. And so I'm pretty sure he played most of the game for me while I watched. Or I mean, I played, but he probably did most of the actual star getting. Not most, but like the hard levels. I did the beginning levels. I can do the, the, the easy stars. Just sprint out of the room. <laughs> uh, what is the temperature outside? <laughs> Feels like 88, I think, last I checked. But I haven't been outside today. I'm sure it's hot where you are. <laughs> uh, okay, it's 1.30 now. 1.37. Alright, I'm gonna call it 
even though there's still 35 people here. <laughs> um, but I'm getting hungry and I'm out of water and this has all been so great. So thank you all so much. Um, oh, quick plugs, I guess, before we go. Um, I will be streaming on the future on Twitch, twitch.tv slash viopatty. So if you go to the description, you can um, follow me there. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet totally, but we'll figure it out. It'll be much more chill. Um, <laughs> we'll be here as long as you are, so yeah. Um, so yeah, Twitch. And also, we now have a public Discord. Uh, links in below, too, so you can hop into there. Um, I do lots of um, just random updates and general chat and stuff. You know, it's Discord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, I guess that's it. Um, have a wonderful rest of your weekend if you're if you're celebrating Labor Day and you have a long weekend like I do, um, or if not, just the rest of your Sunday. And thank you all so much for coming, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.